Good evening. How are you doing? Enjoying the weekend so far? Good. It's been a great weekend. I've had a great time uh, dwelling in the Word, sharing with other believers, being encouraged by what God is doing in so many people and in so many families. It is a blessing indeed uh, to be here and to share with you. And I just want to thank you for the opportunity to share a little bit of what God is doing in Colombia. Uh, before we get to that, let's see if we can get the computer there. Uh, there's a couple of verses that I want to share with you. The first one is in the book of John. So if you would quickly turn your Bibles to John. Chapter 17. Verse 14, Luke, uh, John 17, 14. As Jesus is praying to his heavenly Father, and he's praying for us that we're going to continue his word, uh, this is what he says. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. The word missionary comes from a Latin word, a word missio, which basically means to be sent to send someone. That's what the word missionary means. And what I wanted to start is with this idea from Jesus himself, as he's praying from each one of us, what is our position with the world? We're not of this world. We're not a part of it. We don't take part of everything this world does. But at the same time, we are not taken out of the world. We are dwelling in it. We are living in it. But we are here with a very specific purpose. The Lord Jesus himself says about us, As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. Now, who is Jesus talking about in these verses? Just a couple of people? Uh, just the apostles? Or is he talking about all believers? He is talking about each and every one of us. Every person in this room has that same calling. The reason you are in this world and you were not taken away to heaven the moment you became a believer, but you remain in this world, is because as the Father has sent his Son so now the Son, Jesus, is sending us into the world. So everybody in this room is a missionary, is somebody who has been sent out with a purpose from Jesus to share the good news out into this world. Now our mission fields may look different. Some of you may be in the working place. Some of you may be in college. Some of you may be in high school. But you have to understand, you have to regard the places where God has placed you in this moment in life as that mission field, as a place where God has sent us, as a place where God has placed us, as a place where God wants us to represent God the Father and to embody who God is and take the good news to the people around us. And I think that's very important for us to consider because often we hear mission reports or we see missions and we think that's out there. You know, it's for a few and for some that are there doing the work but doesn't really relate to us. And I wanted to open this report just by saying we are all in this. We just have different places where God has called us. And the moment you realize that, the moment you realize that where you are is your mission field, then you will be even more open for God to move you around and maybe show you a different place, a different country, or a different culture where he might use you. 
So just wanted to share that with you. Um, there we go. Let me save this. I'll just go. Okay. And I'd like to share for a couple of minutes about Fiel Bible Institute. Uh, for the last seven years, uh, my family and I have had the privilege of serving the Lord in Bogota, Colombia. Colombia is a country in South America. It's the first country you'll find in South America. Um, it has 42 million people, and we live in the capital city, Bogota. Uh, Bogota is a big city. It's about um, 8 million people or so. Uh, and as a big city, is very busy. Uh, we have 22 assemblies uh, in the city. Uh, the Lord has blessed the work there. There's over 1,800 believers that gather in the city of Bogota. But 1,500 compared to 8 million is not much. And then compare that to 42 million people in the country and is not that much either. So we have a desire. There's a passion in the believers of the city that we want to reach out to more people to more families within the city, outside of the city of Colombia, of Bogota, and maybe out into the world. So there's that desire, but there's some frustration with that. Um, and I'd like to talk to you about that. So big city, lots of traffic, lots of changes, and also a lot of busyness. People are just busy all the time. And that affects the way that we do church. Now there's a need, and... Okay, I'll just go without it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, what's our great need? Uh, in the past years, we saw there was a decrease in the number of assemblies that were being planted. In the 80s and 90s, we were planting almost one or two assemblies every year, like new assemblies, like based out of new believers, which is very exciting for everybody. But in the last year, that hasn't happened so much. So we got to a point where we were like in a plateau. Uh, the reason for that was a lack of leadership. There were not enough believers that were mature enough and trained enough to start new works. Uh, the ones that already had been, you know, edified were busy. And all of them were first-generation believers. So they don't have, you know, the tradition, the training, and all this Bible embedded into them. So the present leadership felt a great need for further training. That's where we had this idea about doing Fiel Bible Institute. We had no place in Colombia, in Bogota, that believers could receive good, sound, theological, and biblical education. And therefore, we had no place where, you know, new evangelists, new uh, shepherds, new elders could be equipped with the Word of God, uh, with knowing what the Word of God needs, and then be, have strong assemblies that would plant other assemblies. So we decided, well, let's do something. Live education is not working because people are so busy and traffic is so bad in Bogota. People will travel for two hours to go to a one-hour class and then two hours more to get to their home. So it wasn't worth it. So we thought about doing an online program, but not just online program. We wanted something that would work with the current leaders, that would take the leadership into account. We, don't want, we didn't want to give them a solution. We wanted to sit down with the elders of the assemblies in Bogota and ask them, what do you need? You know, what is the assembly's need? And how can we train the people that are currently in your assemblies to help you as elders equip the church, strengthen it, and plant more assemblies? We wanted to consider the culture limitations, the fact that because it's a city, because people are busy, we needed something that would adjust to them. Uh, we can't ask people to take four years uh, and just, you know, study in the Bible school without work because most of them are bivocational. They are working. They are trying really hard to provide for their families. So it would be not possible for them to stop that and just study. So we needed to consider that. And we needed to relate the theory to the practice. One of the big things that elders told us was 
Uh, every time that one of our believers goes and studies the Bible, uh, they come back and they have big heads, but they have no way to serve. And they sit down with their big heads and they criticize everything we do in the assembly, but they don't provide any solutions. So if you're going to train believers, help us to train them, not just to know a lot of things, but to apply that to know how to equip believers, how to disciple, how to evangelize, how to actually do ministry and not just know about ministry. Um, we also needed to provide a good biblical formation uh, with limited resources. We don't have as many biblical and good teachers as we have here in the States. Uh, so we have a very limited amount of resources and we needed to help the churches relate to one another. So we began this journey of creating online content. Uh, that meant learning how to film, learning how to edit, learning how to do all these crazy things that we had no idea about. But the Lord was really good, and He provided and He helped, and we were able to come up with the content for it. What we wanted to do was helping believers to grow as they're working or as they're studying. Uh, we didn't want to take them away from what they're currently called by the Lord, but just to equip them as they're doing the rest of their lives. Uh, that's why a big figure that we came out with uh, was mentoring. Uh, that means a person who is by the side of this believer, helping them to apply what they're learning, uh, pushing them to serve in their assembly, uh, and pushing them to grow in their spiritual life. It's been really interesting. Uh, and so far, we've had a lot of progress. Uh, we it started in 2017 with a program just for elders. Uh, we wanted to equip the elders because we received that from them. They told us, sometimes we don't know exactly how to do ministry. We feel that we need better preparation on how to study the Bible, uh, on how to do more disciples, on how to do evangelism. So we designed a one-year program where elders would take about four or five hours a week of work, log in online, watch some of the videos. They could connect with the other elders in their assembly or in other assemblies and, you know, do homework together, give ideas about ministry. And we thought, well, we have 22 assemblies. Maybe one elder from each assembly will sign up. But to our surprise, we had 85 elders that signed up that year and finished the program. Like, they worked through the whole year of how to study the Bible, how to do theology, how to evangelize, and it was such a blessing. Uh, we got reports from assemblies that would tell us, oh, it's great what's happening. You know, like in our meetings, we're no longer discussing what color do we need to paint the walls or what color are we going to do the chairs, but we're talking about discipleship. We're talking about how to disciple people, how to disciple uh, people in church, how to do a program. And we've seen the church being strengthened by these elders uh, being humble and decided we want to be equipped and taking this program. Uh, it was hard work for them, but at the same time, it was a program that was designed to meet their needs and without traveling, without transportation, being able to take it. Our next step was getting to everybody. So we designed four courses, uh, Conflict Resolution, the Book of Acts, uh, the Origins of the Bible. And in 2018, we had 175 students that joined to those courses. Uh, again, we had a good report from that. And then last uh, year, we began our program, like our formal program. It's a four-year training program. Uh, now, four years, taking one class at a time. Uh, you're working six hours a week uh, to, put, to study and to get this going. And we had 32 students that signed up for that four-year program. That's really exciting. We're finishing with them this first year. And then this summer, uh, we filmed the book of Galatians, a study on the book of Galatians. And it was so exciting for us to see that 208 believers are going to partake on this study. So we're actually starting tomorrow. And tomorrow we'll have uh, 208 believers of everywhere in the city that are going to be logging in for eight weeks and read scripture, watch a video from the teacher, memorize a verse, uh, engage in quiet time on Galatians, and we just want to encourage them to really go deep into the Word during those eight weeks. Uh, and that has been really exciting. There's a lot of work to do. We still need to film more courses. We still need to um, 
you know, get ready for a new school year. We're praying for students that have the time, but they don't have the financial resources to participate on this. And we would appreciate your prayers. It's not just about having a school and not just about, you know, giving people the Bible. The whole reason we're doing this is because we want these believers to grow in the Lord and in the Scriptures so that they go back to their assemblies, they strengthen their assemblies, they create disciples there, and then having strong assemblies would help us to plant more churches in the city and outside of the city. Our main goal is the gospel reaching out to the country of Colombia. And we need it. It is a Catholic country. Uh, it is easier to share the gospel. Uh, but there is such a big need of the gospel, like in everywhere else in the world, to penetrate the hearts of Colombian people. So if you remember us, please pray. Pray for Colombia. Pray that God will open more doors, that God will engage more hearts with the gospel. And pray for us as we work in this Bible Institute, that God will give us the knowledge, the wisdom, uh, and the energy to do all the work that needs to be done to equip believers there, uh, have strong churches that will plant more churches. Thank you very much.